Hey everybody, really excited this week to bring you another course preview. This time we're headed over to the UK for the Precision Fuel and Hydration Hokey Cokey Roseland Swim Run on July 8th, 2023. The only UK Attila Merit race. Let's hit that rock flute. Welcome to the Low Tide Boys, a swim run podcast. I'm Chip. And I'm Chris, and this is episode 172 of the show. As Chipper mentioned, we are doing another course preview. Woo. This one for the only UK Attila Merit Race, the Precision Fuel and Hydration Hokey Cokey Swim Run in Roseland. We have seemed to have back into a cool theme this month. This is what Chipper mentioned on the run this morning. So we're just going to go with it. So we're just going to do a bunch of course previews course this preview month. month. Let's go for it. We asked Mad Hatter Sports Race Director and former guest of the show, John Yelland, to help us give you a comprehensive course preview of this race. And Chipper, without kind of bearing the lead or anything. Stoke it's level's good. high. It's good. Stoke level's high for this race. <laughs> it is good. So I think with that, why don't we just let John sort of tee up this event? Take it away, John. Welcome. My name is John Yellen from Mad Hat Sports, and this is an introduction to the Precision Fuel and Hydration Hokey Cokey Roseland on the 8th of July. The Roseland, now in its third year, is a point-to-point traverse along the south coast of Cornwall from the picturesque fishing village of Porscatho to the finish at Mevergizzi, taking in breathtaking views, technical running, and beautiful swims. It's a great way to see Cornwall in all its glory. However, as the swims are in the open sea, we're always in danger of mother nature coming and playing and making things more challenging as she did in 2022, where we had to cancel two of the latter swims due to the changing conditions, meaning the 7.5 kilometer run turned into a 15 kilometer run. I'm sure we were popular. What I'm trying to say is you need to prepare for everything with the Hokey Cokey Roseland because it's exposed and anything could happen. The course has been designed to be as adventurous as possible with as many scrambles, climbs and gnarly entry and exit points as we could find. The course has also been made so that the event gets harder and more challenging the further you go into the event with the toughest swimming and running stages later in the event. The distance of the Hokey Cokey Roseland, the total distance of the Hokey Cokey Roseland, is 36 kilometer, consisting of eight kilometers of swimming over 10 legs and 28 kilometers of running over 11 legs, with the longest swim being two kilometers and the longest run being 7.5, unless Mother Nature comes and plays. That's a 23% ratio of swimming to running. There's three checkpoints on the course with precision hydration, water, fluids, and gels, uh, sweet snacks, savoury snacks, all sorts of goodies available for you. The swimming is in beautiful, clear Cornish waters. Um, It should be reasonably warm. Lots of wildlife. You might even see the odd seal. Changeable conditions, as I mentioned earlier. And one of the interesting things about the course is there are a lot of blind exits. So that means you are getting into the water, not being able to see where your exit points are. So if you listen to the marshals, when you get into the water, they will tell you what you're aiming for and where to turn. It's a real key thing. You need to make sure you listen to the marshals. The running is very technical in a lot of places. It's Cornish coast path. So there's holes, there's stones, trees, stumps, steps, there's beach, there's road, there's a bit of everything thrown in. And it's pretty hilly. It's not like climbing a mountain, but it is up and down. It's constantly changing um, and you, it's difficult to get a rhythm. But you'll have fun. It's lovely. Have a look around and see what you can see. The interesting thing about the runs is that in the distance, you can see the headlands. So you can always see where you're headed. From the start line in Porscatha, you can look out and see Nair Head which is just after checkpoint one. So you can actually see where you're headed, which is sometimes a good thing, sometimes not such a bad, such a good thing. The other thing to do is while you're on the course is to take around and look back from where you've come from. You really get a, 
a sense of how far you've traveled along the course. Holes, stones, trees, stumps, and steps. You're getting it all. Yeah. The hokey cokey. You are. You are. I mean, I must say, uh, he's definitely not sugarcoating anything here. I this love This is it. a proper adventure in beautiful, you know, beautiful, beautiful Cornwall. Interestingly, he mentioned that the swims were 23%, which gives it a Swift score Swift. of 23%. <laughs> this is EX Swim Run's term for percentage of swimming in a swim run. You can check out episode 72 and episode 129 to hear more about that. But I love the fact that it's challenging. Yes. It was designed that way on purpose. Intentionally not avoiding, very much in the Attila, the spirit yeah. of Attila. Sure. Here's a nice calm beach. Here. Nope, nope, nope. nope. You got to go up the rocks. No, thank you. Please head out this way. <laughs> um, and I like the the point-to-point nature. Go go do yourself a favor as well when you're listening to this episode. Head on over to Mad Hatter sportseventsco.uk they have youtube video you can kind of follow along get a sense of what you're in for um but it really does look like quite an amazing adventure and just beautiful countryside definitely definitely yeah so you might ask it's like okay i'm sold low tide boys sold how do i get there well luckily (laughs) john took care of that for us too (laughs) so here we're going to kick it over to our travel agent john yelland for how to get to the Hokey Cokey. It's going to get the key to the city with this one. So getting here, Mevagizi, where the event village is based, is accessible via roads, main roads into Cornwall of the A30. Um, and you can get a train in from Paddington and catch the train in various places along that route. Or you can fly into Newquay Airport from London and some other airports. The only thing with train and aeroplane is that the other end you would need to get to Mevagizzi, which is about a six mile journey outside of St. Austell. Um, so we would advise driving, but it's up to you. There's lots of places to stay in and around the area. Lots of B&Bs, hotels, Airbnbs and campsites in the area. But we would recommend you book early because Cornwall in the summer gets very, very busy. Um, so yeah, that's one piece of advice to get in there early. The event village, as I said, is in Mevagizzi. It's held in the primary school with registration and briefing on the Friday night before the race. You must attend that. There will be the the usual facilities at the school, uh, with toilets, changing areas on the Saturday morning as well, with a secure bag drop. So you can leave kit in the school whilst you go off and have your adventure that'll all be locked away. Post-race, there will be food and drink available for competitors, uh, free of charge from Mad Hatter, but there will also be other food, more substantial food available and drinks available um, to buy from catering companies that will be there. You're going to need it to replenish what you've burnt. The other thing you get at the finish is the medal from Mad Hat Sports, the event t-shirt, and if you're lucky enough to get one of the trophies, the best trophies in the world, my my view, our view, uh, some trophies by Mark Richards Art made out of wood and resin split in half to make the course outline. Anyway, it's enough rambling. Well, I really love, my favorite part of that clip was how him just saying that we're you're going to need a substantial meal after your adventure yeah, for yeah. the hokey cokey. You're definitely going to need it. Yeah, in uh in sort of researching this, I was like, where is uh the Rosalind Peninsula? So, uh the closest airport you mentioned was in Newquay. Uh you know, you you can leave reviews on anything. And mm-hmm. Google Maps, my favorite review was uh tiny airport for small planes. <laughs> And it sounds like you might need to maybe rent a car if they have that or some sort of... Yeah, get to drive on the other side of the road. That's always fun. Well, or the side you're used to. Yeah. You're already over there. (laughs) So any Americans or outside of the UK folks will get to do experience uh, other side of the road. Yeah, and it definitely seems like, you know, you definitely want to get on top of this early, probably summer vacation spot vibes or... It definitely seems that way. And sounds like a really cool trophy. I, I want to see these trophies for the podium folks. Uh, yeah. It sounds like some really cool art, uh, well, reclaimed wood situations. Well, you know, after all the holes and stones and trees and stumps and steps, steps <laughs> you, you've earned it. You have, for sure. Um, Speaking of um, 
<laughs> all the different whole holes stones, and stones tre- and sh- trees and stones and stuff. It's going to be on a t-shirt there for sure. <laughs> we wanted to do a course preview and we asked John to basically come on and be like, hey, can you walk us through this thing? And for this one, as Chipper mentioned earlier, we recommend pumping up, punching up the course map and just kind of listening along so you can kind of visualize how the course goes. It really enhances the description when you when you can kind of see it. And it looks amazing just from the aerial view. Yeah, and and this is something that Chris and I do. If you're planning on doing this race and maybe you're doing some studying, quote unquote, it's the night before the race or a couple of days before Chris and I take our paddles, we'll listen to sort of the the preview, follow along on the Google Maps. They have a, a really excellent job uh, laying the map out on Google Maps and mm-hmm. write down on your paddles. Okay, run one, blah, blah. And it's a good time to sort of talk through a little bit about what your strategy might be for the race. Okay, Chris, uh, sounds like a lot of blind swims here. Uh, so how are we going to handle that? Sighting sounds to be really important for this and, and marking those kind of things down. Um, great. They have plenty of, of fuel and aid stations here, and yeah. those are also marked on the Google Maps as well. But Totally, totally. Yeah, and if you want some more info on what Chipper's talking about in terms of paddle riding, you can check out our Swim Run 201 Swim Paddle Hieroglyphics. That's episode 106. Nice. That, was a, that was a fun one. That was a good one dropping nuggets on on that one for sure yeah but let's kick it over to john for a a thorough leg by leg course preview Mm -hmm. just hold up right there if you are already interested and loving the sound of the hokey cokey swim run john and the team at mad hatter sports has been cool enough to send us a discount code for anyone listening to the show use the code ltb20 for 20 percent off your registration so big thanks to to John and the team for supplying that code. Now let's jump into the course preview. I'm going to give you a brief description of the Hokey Cokey Roseland course. You'll be bussed to the start at Port Scatho, where you'll be set off. And the start will be of 800 meter gentle run along coast path and road through the picturesque village of Port Scatho. Down into the harbour where you'll meet a marshal who will direct you across the bay and you're swimming straight across the bay for the first swim. It's 800 metres and you're aiming for the rocks at the end and using the uh, the life observation tower as a guide point where you'll be met by a marshal. There is a bit of a scramble up the rocks at this point and then you're on to run two. Run two is 840 metres. Again, quite flat at this point on the coast path. You'll head down some steps and onto a beach called Purbean Beach. At this point, they'll be met by a marshal and you'll be directed to get into the water, swim parallel to the shore, go around the rock in the middle and you'll be told to aim for a marshal at the far end. This swim is 630 metres. At the end of this swim, you once again scramble over some rocks, over a fence or a gate, and then you're on to a bit of a longer run this time. You're running 3.4 kilometres. Again, pretty flat. A couple of little inclines at this point. Pretty flat though, until you get to Khan Beach and the first checkpoint. At this checkpoint, you can grab some food and some fluids and water and anything else you need. <clears throat> and this is the first of the longer swims. So this one's a kilometre. It's a completely blind exit point. So the marshal will describe where you need to go, what you need to aim for, where you need to turn left, and then you'll see the marshal. So you're heading for a place called Mallet's Cottage. Once you get out of Mallet's Cottage, it's a steep, narrow climb up to the coast path where our marshals will direct you. So take that bit nice and steady. And once you get onto the coast path, you've got another 3.4 kilometre run. At this point, it's starting to get a bit hillier. There's a climb out of Mallet's Cottage to Khan Nairhead, sorry, Nairhead. 
Uh, I do know what I'm doing. And you'll run along the coast path. You'll go past a beautiful little bay called Kibberick Cove. We would have loved to have done a swim here, but it was not feasible for us to get in and out of the water there. Anyway, at the end of the 3.4 kilometre run, you head down a field and then you're onto a little tiny coastal track and then you're going to clamber down some rocks into, into the water at Broom Park for a short 300 metre swim. Again, this is pretty blind, but as you're heading down into the swim, to the entry to the swim, you can actually see where you're headed. You'll be able to see people in front of you potentially. Uh, or if you're at the lead, you'll see the marshals on the rocks at the far side. So you will get an idea of where you're headed. So you'll get out of the water at Broom Park. And then you are into a 1.8 kilometre run to Port Low. This starts with a bit of a, an interesting climb up some zigzags. Uh, and then you've got a nice downhill section into Port Low, Where you'll be met by the marshals and where the second checkpoint is. At Port Low, you will get into the water. Again, a steep scramble down the rocks. So take care. And at this point, you're in for a one kilometre swim, which is again hidden from sight when you get into the water. Again, listen to the marshals. They will instruct you what you need to be aiming for and what you need to look for. It was this swim last year the where we started to consider changing these the course because of the conditions. So when you get out of the water after this swim, so it's a kilometre swim, when you get out of the water there, again, it's a little scramble up some rocks and then you're onto a 2.8 kilometre run. Again, undulating, quite hilly, quite technical at this point. And at the end of this, you go through the little, tiny little port of Port Holland and East Port Holland. And you'll head out on the coast path towards Carhaze. And as you're running along, halfway along the track towards Carhaze, there's an immediate right hand turn in, in one of the fields. It'll be signposted. Don't worry, you don't have to remember this. But it'll be signposted. Then you're down to another interesting entry point. So you have to use a rope to get down the, the slope where you'll be met on the beach by a marshal. You're then into a 750 metre swim. Again, completely blind, but this time it's a nice beach exit. You just need to watch for this one. If you try to cut the corner into the beach, there are lots of shallow rocks at this point. When you get into Carhaze, or Porth Looney Beach. Have a look at the castle. Wave to Charles and Lizzie who live in the castle. There's another checkpoint here. Grab some food and drink. And then you're on to the long run. Seven and a half K. Taking in the stunning Dodman Point. Going past Hemet Beach. Uh, once you get to, it's pretty much hilly all the way up to Dodman Point. But once you get to the top of Dodman Point, it's all a nice downhill section where you can let the legs fly if you're comfortable running on the coast path and down to Vault Beach. As you're running down, you will see the marshals on the rocks at Vault Beach. So you are aiming for them. They will put you in the water and direct you where to go. At this point, you've got a, a one kilometer swim Again, totally blind around the headland into another little fishing village called Goran Haven. There's a checkpoint in Goran Haven. You're aiming for the beach and it's a lovely little swim. That Again, if you cut too far in, there are rocks, so you just need to be careful. So once you get out of Goran Haven, there is another checkpoint there. Now you're on to a 2.9 kilometer run pretty hilly to start but then again once you get to the top it's a lovely downhill section to Kelowna Beach you'll see the marshals on your way down you can't miss them if anybody does then they're in trouble 
And this is where you are into the water at Kelowna Beach for the longest swim of the day. So this is two kilometers. Again, it's totally blind. You have to swim out around a headland, then turn pretty much 180 degrees back on yourself to aim into Port Mellon. Port Mellon never looks like it gets any closer. And there's a colony of seals that live around there. So you might see the odd, odd seal coming and saying hello. Uh, it is also sometimes quite busy with watercraft, but our water team, our water safety team will be, will be managing that and making sure you're all good and safe and healthy. So you get out of the beach at Port Mellon, you got a nice gentle, I say gentle, it's not really gentle, run, 1.6 kilometre run into Mevagizzi. Mevagizzi is very busy, lots of people milling around and you will need to run down into the harbour and around the harbour where you'll be met by more marshals who will get you into the water at Mevagizzi for a 550 metre swim. Again, this is a totally blind exit, so you cannot see where you're going. The marshals, once again, will direct you. They will give you all the information you need. Be careful on this, because there's some steps to get into water, which can be quite slippery sometimes. Obviously, we will take every precaution to make sure that you are safe. Once you get out at Polstreeth Beach, that's the end of your swimming. You've then got a 1400 meter run up the famous steps. Anybody that's done it before will know about. So up the famous steps at Post Polstreeth. They are made of scaffolding. So they are a challenge at this point. And then you're up the hill to the finish line where you'll be met by me and Martin and the girls for a high five, some food, massage if you want it and uh, medals and t-shirts and all sorts of stuff and lots and lots and lots of praise. This event is a, is a proper adventure from start to finish. And as I said, the course has been designed that way. We could have brought you into more beaches or put you in the water at beaches, but we wanted this to be as much as we could to be back to nature and, and just enjoying a, an amazing day out. The coast path could be busy, Last year we had another race on go on the same time. But if you do see people out there, say hello, give them a wave, and most people are friendly. Um, I think that's it. It'll be a great day. Be lovely to see you all there. And uh, come and give me a shout when you get there. All right, thanks. Proper adventure from start to finish. Yeah. I don't think there's any better way to describe a swim run than that. And I might, need, I might need to listen to it again. I also think that John basically said he's giving everyone massages at the end. I heard that too on the house. Massage. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know if it's him doing it. But that's kind of what it sounded like to me. So, you know, you can check with him on that if you end up Hold going to the race. It. Hold him to it. But I thought really just can't thank John enough for that content. I think in terms of describing the race... Again, when we're having the course map up, it really kind of painted a picture of what that experience would be like. Mm -hmm. And dare I say, it got me super stoked. It did. And this is the only UK Attila merit race, uh, as we mentioned at the at the start of the show. And yeah. with Attila's new rules and qualifications for Attila World Championship, you could actually qualify and Directly. get a spot, direct qualification from the hokey cokey race and chipper let me ask you a question you know we're a couple seasoned swim runners at this point it's true it seems to me that this race seems worthy of being a merit <laughs> race would you agree with i that mean statement? absolutely i i i would imagine john and, and co didn't have too hard of a sales pitch to make to the the folks at atala yeah um looking at the map the the challenging nature of the swims i mean i know we're big on the swim this year I, I love really these challenging kind of open water swims. Sighting is going to be really key. Yeah. I mean, this is, if you're a strong swimmer, this is sometimes to, seems like to flex, flex your, flex your strengths. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I think this race just has a lot of things going, going for it, which make it really interesting. I mean, it really came out of the radar for us last year when the precision fuel and hydration crew were going out there. Mm -hmm. We'd interviewed John for the show. So we kind of, we already knew what was happening with Mad Hatter sports, but, but yeah, with this, with this, course preview again can't thank john enough for for this content because 
I mean, it seemed really cool. And I think a couple things, if we can go into kind of our thoughts on it, yeah. that I wanted to chat with you about Chipper is, is one, the fact that it was, it was, this was all intentional, right? Yes. All these decisions were made to try to make, to try to create like an amazing adventure. And I think in that respect, it, it's kind of cool that that was the intention going in. Mm-hmm. And also that the result looks like no an problem. Epic day. Yeah. Yeah. Scored the goal on that because that really, really checked off that box. I also like the fact that, you know, swim run is supposed to be hard. Mm-hmm. And I like that, you know, there's really no sugar coating what, what to expect. And I think that's almost like liberating in a way. It's like, yeah, it's going to be hard. It's going to be an adventure. It's going to be this crazy experience. Yep. But, you know, there's no delusions going in. So I just love the way that the race is described in that respect. Yeah, a- absolutely. And I know we're, we're a couple months away from this. And so you might be thinking about what kind of training do you need to do and how to, to kind of approach that. Obviously, we're not local ex- experts about the the terrain there, but we did just lo- uh, uh, release a um, Swim Run 101 Swim Run training, which gives some pretty broad uh, baseline advice. Um, and in one part that we really talked about in that episode um, and in that YouTube video that would be really applicable here is kind of the the adventure piece of it, but be ready for not just running and swimming, but the scrambling. You heard a lot here. It sounds like there's a lot of rough exits, maybe some climbing, some some wet stones to navigate and things like that. So it's 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 going to be uh, your less pedestrian um, entries and exits here. So so be mm-hmm. ready. Be ready for that adventure. And I think if you come with that attitude and, and that mindset, I you're you're only in store for what seems like an amazing day here. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be super, super fun. Um, yeah, echoing everything you said, it's episode 165. People at home want to check out our Swim One Training 101. We also have a video on YouTube that kind of talks about that as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I am stoked for everyone who gets who's doing this. We know a bunch of people that are going to be there, which is yes. great. Um, you know, And they have some of the best hydration and, and fuel. Yeah, around I mean, that's well. cool, too. And honestly, when we decided to do this, it wasn't because we're, we love P- PFH and everything they do. But we also love PFH and everything. They but do. we do love PH and everything they do. Um, but uh, yeah, but they're the title sponsor. So it's cool that they're that they're <clears throat> sort of helping grow the sport of swim run in the UK where they're based. Yeah. And and yeah, I mean, UK is our second, third biggest audience, depending on the month. And I mean, it's so awesome to see the sport growing there because there's so many places to swim, so many people down for the adventure. It's, it's really cool. Absolutely. And Precision Fuel and Hydration even have their own uh, fuel and fuel planner for mm-hmm. this race specifically. Yeah. So PFH has already plugged in all the distances, the swims. So you can check out their site there, plug in you know what your sweat rate is right there, make a purchase. Right, you want to use code low tie twenty three. You beat me to it. Oh, sorry, I was, gonna, I was just gonna, I was just gonna do it all seductively. Oh, by the way, if you need some, uh, <clears throat> so when you're you like when you're putting down, <laughs> <laughs> so when you're reviewing your precision fuel and hydration plan, what code are we gonna plug in there? Low tie twenty three. <laughs> then oh, that'll save you fifteen percent off uh, your first order at Precision Fuel and Hydration. So. You get a, you get the best of both worlds, but mm-hmm. I could see here, I would be loading up with some nineties, some of the jumbo gels. Yep, and it looks like it's going to be a warm day, so uh, probably be taking some salt tabs, some of the salt uh, pills with me as well on this. Yep, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think with that, I mean, I, I love this course preview. I think we're getting better at these kind of like uh, rapid fire course previews, and and like Chipper mentioned on our run this morning, we kind of backed into this theme. Let us know what you think. We just want to sort of highlight what potential Other awesome swim, runs, swim yeah. run experiences could be, <laughs> not just races that we've done or whatever. Um, these are obviously all races that we want to do, so I guess it's self-serving in that respect. But, uh, but yeah, thanks for checking it out. DM us, send us an email if you have any questions or absolutely, and if maybe you can't, recommend a race for us. Yeah, if you can't make it to the Hokey Cokey Swim Run, but you're in the area... Uh, Mad Hatter Sports is the race production race director event, and John that we mentioned before, they have three uh, three total swim runs for the year. Mm-hmm. So maybe there's something else that you can do in May or September, even potentially. Yeah, and if you're in the UK, you have as keen as mustard. You have the Coniston swim run coming up. You have Love Swim Run. So yep. definitely, you have options. You got lots of options. UK coming through. Totally coming through. Do you across the pond? Sure. That's it for this week's episode 
Thanks so much for listening to the show. Make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave a wet rating or review since that's the best way to help other people discover the show and the sport of swim run. Check out our website, lowtideboys.com. That's boys with a Z for swim run resources, including gear guides, tips, how-to videos, and so much more. Make sure to check out our meme page at the Low Tide Boys on Instagram. If you have any questions or suggestions for the show, send us a DM or email us at lowtideboys at gmail.com. We'd like to thank Riding Easy Records for our show music and, of course, our wives for their support and tolerance of our swim run and other activities. Lots of activities. Lots of activities. <laughs> Finally, you can support our efforts on Patreon. Until next time, get out there and go for a swim. Then a run. And then a swim. Then another run. Then another swim. Then run some more. Just keep going. Let's go. And then stop at some point because, you know. And fuel. Don't forget to fuel. Got to fuel, too. Of course, yes. <laughs>